If you're a woman right now, you must be feeling under attack, like your rights are constantly being attacked and degraded and diminished. In America, the US Supreme Court has just shot down a 50-year statute giving federal lawful ability for women in America to have an abortion. This went down extremely badly with stars at Glastonbury, including Billie Eilish, Olivia Rodrigo, Lily Allen and Kendrick Lamar. Today is a really, really dark day for uh, women in the US. So many women and so many girls are going to die because of this. And um, I wanted to dedicate this next song to the five members of the Supreme Court. We hate you. Judge you, they judge Christ. God speed for women's rights. They judge you, they judge Christ. God speed for women's rights. They judge you, they judge Christ. God speed for women's rights. They judge... Well, whatever your view of abortion, and my view is that it should be a woman's right to choose what she does with her body, there's no doubt that what this ruling will do by sending the law back to the states in America is that in many states, it's going to be incredibly difficult for particularly poor and vulnerable women, the most vulnerable members of society in many ways, to get the health treatment that they want. People who stand up for women's rights at the moment get shot down. Take J.K. Rowling. Now, this is a woman who's written some of the biggest selling books in history, which have made some of the biggest box office grossing movies in history. And yet the stars who've become hugely rich and famous because of those movies, based on those books, cannot now even mention her name. Recently, at the 25th anniversary of The Philosopher's Stone, there's been a series of events where Harry Potter stars have turned out. But the moment that J.K. Rowling, the author of the books that have made them rich and famous, the moment her name gets mentioned, look at what happens. Here's Tom Felton. JK obviously has a, a sort of more of a, a back seat now. Is it strange kind of her not being around at things like this? Next, next question, please. Oh, OK. Uh... Madness, right? I mean, I'm grateful. Never mind anything else. And all because JK Rowling says that actually sex matters in the debate, particularly about trans sport, for example. And what better example of the unfairness around that issue than this weekend where a 29-year-old trans woman skater, Ricky Trez, who was born a biological man, beat a 13-year-old girl, Shiloh Katori, to win New York City's women's skateboarding contest. How can that be right? How can that be fair? And yet some of the most famous, successful sports people in the world think it's both right and fair, and in fact, they're enraged that anyone should raise even a quizzical eyebrow at this. Megan Rapino of the American women's soccer team, the world champions, said, I'm 100% supportive of trans inclusion. People do not know very much about it. We're missing almost everything. Tom Daly, who's the British Olympic gold medal-winning champion, said, I was furious, he said, about the recent announcement that in certain sports, trans athletes will now be banned from competing against women. Like most queer people, he added, anyone that's told that they can't compete or can't do something they love just because of who they are, it's not on. Really, Tom? Really? I'll tell you what's not on. Is you saying that you're furious by something that is so obviously unfair and wrong? And here's why, Tom Daly. You're a gay man, and great. I'm very happy for you that you can lead your life how you want to lead it. And I fully support your rights to fairness and equality in every regard. But what if you decided that you wanted to transition to be a woman and all you had to do to compete against women in an elite sport was to just go through a year of hormone reduction therapy and then you could dive against women born to female biological bodies. You would become immediately the greatest female diver in the history of diving. You would smash the records so irrevocably that no woman born to a female body would ever probably come close to beating them. How is that fair or right? So it's fine for you to spout off and say how furious you are that trans athletes now will have to compete in a different way, but not against women born to female bodies. It's fine for you to do that, but it's not right, is it? You're not right. Well, joining me now is someone who's had no trouble at all explaining what a woman is, a question that has stumped politicians and celebrities now all over the world. Last week, I had the president of the National Union of Students, who was incapable of even beginning to answer the question. 
Uh, well, 59 times Grand Slam titles winning tennis superstar, nine times Wimbledon champion, Martina Navratilova joins me now. Uh, Martina, great to see you. First of all, how are you? Thank you. I'm good, thank you. I'm I, want to, well. I want to just play the clip I just mentioned. This is the, the, the female president of the National Union of Students in this country who did brilliantly to get this job. And it's a wonderful, I, I would say, a wonderful accolade for a woman to get to this position. I then asked her one simple question. What is a woman? What? What's that got to do with the price of bread, Piers? I, I literally to told you I'm about speech. to debate this I'm movie. I'm not on that segment. Guys, ask the next girls. What is a woman? What do you mean, ask the next... I said, ask the next guest. You don't know what a woman is? A woman is someone who defines as a woman, period, done. Well, next anyone? Co- next guest, please. Anyone? OK, I'm a woman. Is that... Yeah? I said next guest, cos that's not my second if I If I say I'm a Boo, woman... I know you're trying to trap me and I'm not fooling If I it. say I'm Sorry. a woman, do you agree I'm a woman? Now, Martina, it was sort of comical on one level, but also I found it really unsettling that here you've got a woman who's actually a real high achiever. She's become president of the National Union of Students. She was very bright and sparky in many ways. But her inability to even want to answer that simple question, to me, perfectly encapsulated the madness of where this debate's gone. What did you make of it? Uh, well, adult human female is the, is the correct answer. Uh, and I find it peculiar that we are only seeing this from one side, with trans women taking up space in women's spaces, but we do not hear the same of men having to define what a man is. Uh, yeah. So wonder that why that is. Of course, I again come from from at this at this from from a sporting uh, viewpoint, and and what what is fairness. So I really come from it at, at this whole issue, from uh, from from position of fairness for for women and girls competing in sports because that with sports uh, biology matters. Right. And so I mean- again, up to you to define yourself how you want, but you need to be able to answer a question. The question: What is a woman? Yes, I completely agree. And when you hear the likes of Megan Rapino and Tom Daly now coming out and expressing their fury that anyone should be concerned about trans athletes competing mm. against women, again, what is your reaction to that? Uh, what are you thinking about, seriously? Because uh, there are groups now that are they're up for inclusion based on self-ID only. There, you, don't, you don't even need to take any hormones, you don't need to do anything at all. Just self-ID as a woman and bingo, you can, com- you can compete as a woman anywhere you want. So this is how far it's gone. And uh, to Megan or Tom, I say, put, put yourself in, into our shoes. Megan has been there, but a great uh, woodworking teacher of mine said to me, if you don't know a solution to a problem, exaggerate the solution. So imagine if we had a team of 11 trans women playing against 11 biological women. Who do you think would win? Now, these would be good athletes, right? They were good as, as men, as competing against males, and now they identify as women, and they even go up the hormone therapy for a year. It doesn't really do much. It certainly doesn't mitigate the advantage that you get automatically when you go through male puberty, which starts at about 11, 12 years old, and you see boys just shoot up uh, five, six inches in a year, uh, and, uh, and, and, the, and that advantage doesn't go away. So. Again, live your life to the fullest, but you really can't have it all. And sports biology matters. And it's just not fair to have to compete against biological males, no matter how long have they been doing the hormone therapy. If they've gone through that male puberty, you really cannot make it a fair fight uh, at the end at all. I mean, I completely agree. What I think is also completely grotesquely unfair is that somebody like you, who's been such a vocal supporter of LGBT rights over the years and who formerly had yourself a transgender coach, Rene Richards, uh, that you've been targeted by the trans activists and branded transphobic, which I just find, frankly, I find it sickening that you've been exposed to that kind of thing. It's, it's disheartening, really, because I have been fighting for our community for decades. Uh, and I welcome Renee Richards with open arms. She's still a good friend of mine to this day. Now, I'm not saying that I'm not transformed because I have a trans friend, but Renee Richards actually agrees with everything that I say. 
about the transgender athletes in sports, women, trans women in sports. So it would be hard to call Renee transphobic, uh, but p some people say, oh, well, she's just too old to know better. Really? She's lived as a woman, for a trans woman for 40 some years now, almost 50 years, and you're gonna explain this to Renee Richards. Good to know. Yeah. Renee now says herself, she should not have been allowed to play when she played as a woman in the, 70, in the 70s. When she was in her 40s, she ranked uh, top 30 in the world in her 40s when she had been playing for a long time. So she knows she should not have been allowed to play then and is definitely on saying the same things that I'm saying. So, Are, are you are. gratified, Martina, that it seems like common sense is finally coming into this debate with, with swimming and rugby and other sporting authorities now what? actually saying, OK, enough is enough. And you see the British government now being pretty yeah. vocal about it as well. I think I think the the tide has turned in that we are kind of seeing trying to find a solution that's equitable, that's fair, that's good for everyone, um, and and common sense kind of is coming back into the fold rather than no you have to do it this way and you you don't get a say in this. So women athletes are speaking out more. Women athletes are now invited for the conversation as to how we can include trans women. Certainly girls under before puberty, trans girls should be able to play w against girls. But again, when you get once you get past puberty, it's a whole different situation. But I think the tide has turned in a in a positive way that we can now have a conversation and see if we can find a solution. You're down at Wimbledon, um, and uh, there's still this running debate, of course, about the Russian uh, tennis players. Some of whom, obviously, they're not there mm. because the British government's stance on on sanctions has meant that the Wimbledon's banned them. We've had this conversation before, but what has been the reaction down there at Wimbledon, do you think, about this decision? Look, we've known about this for over a month, right? So the players have kind of accepted it, so this is the deal. Nobody gets points, so nobody gets ahead by playing other than getting a Wimbledon title or getting to the finals and making a lot of money. Uh, but I think the players are working just as hard, trying just as hard to play. The field is weaker on the women's side. I think we have over 10 players that have not been able, allowed to play. So it's, it's depleted the field, both on the men's side, obviously. <laughs> World's number one cannot play. So I think it's a really sad situation. There are no winners here. And I hope that this is the last that we will have this situation. US Open already announced they will allow Russian players to play. And let's just hope that this horrible war uh, in Ukraine, this attack on Ukraine ends as soon as possible. So. You know, there's no winners here at all. Yeah. It's all a self-made uh, self issue, and it's just a tragedy all, all the way around. So I just hope that this is the last we'll talk about it and yeah. we can get on with it, and hopefully Ukraine can get on with rebuilding their country. Yeah, most I completely of all. agree. Uh, Emma Raducanu, our great hope here, uh, won today. She looked pretty yep. good. Um, it's been a fascinating journey for her, hasn't it? Because she had a wobble at Wimbledon. She recovered and wins the yep. U.S. Open out of nowhere, which is one of the most stunning sporting victories in the history of sport, never mind tennis. She's struggled again since then to, to reclaim that kind of level of performance. Yep. She's gone through a lot of coaches, coach after coach after coach after coach. What do yep. you make of what's happened with Emma Raducanu? And what did you see on court today? Do you think she's got it in her to potentially win Wimbledon? <laughs> There's a lot of questions. So, no, I don't think Emma will win Wimbledon this time around, but certainly has the potential to win it one day. I don't think she's fit enough. Her forehand looks a bit dodgy. She's not hitting through the ball, and she really could have lost the match today if Van Uitwijk played a little bit better. Uh, but certainly the potential is there. So I think the first mistake was letting go of the coach that got her to that U.S. Open title, and uh, maybe they should have stuck, stuck with that guy because he did a great job. Since then, I'm not sure. There have been a lot of changes. And uh, I think you can get too many, too much information and then you don't know which way to go because you're getting so many different viewpoints. So you need to kind of stick with somebody to see if it works first, if you mesh with them in the first place. So I hope she finds a solution. She's a great talent. Uh, and, uh, you know, I think she, she might get into the second week, but I don't see her winning unless she finds the form that she had at the US Open, in which case anything can happen. Yeah, I agree. I think the thing about Emma Raducanu, we just don't know which one's going to turn up. But when she's on it, my God, she's unbelievable. Right. Martina, brilliant to talk to you. Yeah, yeah. Thank you so just much. Enjoy, enjoy right your time there. We'll Thank speak you. to you again right. before the, uh, Thanks, the tournament's Chris. over. Look forward to it.